Hello. Today's video, we are going to discuss about the manufacturing account. And uh, we see how it's supposed to be done. So the manufacturing account, it is actually accounts that is normally meant for the entities, which instead of purchasing finished goods, they normally purchase raw materials and then they convert those raw materials into finished goods and then they sell them. I want us to do an illustration on how we prepare them, having explained in the audios all about it. So I find it more necessary to do an illustration on that. On the revision exercise that is on your e-learning dashboard, we can uh, have a look at it and maybe explain how it was done uh, for clarity purpose. So if you look at that particular question, you have got inventory and the inventory, remember, we have got the inventory for raw materials. We have an inventory in form of work in progress and we have got inventory in form of finished goods. Then we have got the carriage for the raw materials the purchase for the raw materials, the direct labor, office salaries, rent, and the list goes on like that. Of importance is to look at the additional information part, whereby you are told uh, inventory at as, as at uh, that first December, which is actually the crossing inventory, the raw materials were amounting to this much, the work in progress were amounting to this, and the finished goods were amounting to this. And then you are told that the rent is to be apportioned between the factory and the office. Remember for the factory, it is used in the manufacturing, while in the office it is used for the income statement. Finished goods are to be transferred from the factory to the sales at a markup over 20%, meaning that this particular entity, the production department sells these goods to the marketing at a profit of 20%. And then the values of the opening and the closing inventory are given at the transfer price like that. Then you are required to prepare the manufacturing account and the income statement for the year ended that first December 2012. On that particular case, here is the solution. When you are doing the manufacturing, the first step is to determine the raw materials that were used the raw materials that were consumed. And how do we determine the raw materials that were used? It is the opening inventory of raw materials. You add the purchase of the raw materials. Don't forget to add carriage in once, remember I said, it is the cost of transporting the purchase of these raw materials. So if we have purchased raw materials for this and we used a transportation cost of this, then we add the two so that we can get the total cost of purchasing those particular materials. Then if you add that, it will give us the raw materials that are available for use or the cost of the raw materials that are available for use. Then you rest the materials at the end of the year which were not used, which are the closing stock like this, so that now we can get the raw materials that were consumed which is amounting to this. Then you add the direct labor, which is actually amounting to this. And because we don't have the direct expenses, direct materials used plus the direct labor plus the direct expenses, if they are there, they give us the prime cost, the prime cost. To the prime cost, you add the indirect factory expenses, indirect factory expenses. Any other expense that was incurred in the factory, which is not here, as uh, the prime cost. We have the depreciation of the machinery because the machinery is used in the factory. We calculate its depreciation and find it is for 10,000. Electricity that is used in the factory is this. And then the incident for the factory, which we are told to apportion in the ratio of this to one. Therefore, it is three over four of this. It is this. You add this, you get this, the figure. If you add now the prime cost plus the indirect factory expenses, you get the gross cost of production, which is this amount here. Then after that, you add the opening work in progress, and then you less the closing work in progress so that you can get the cost of goods that was finished. To this cost, then you add a markup, markup of that on that cost of 20%, which is this, and this is the cost of finished goods that was transferred to trading like that. And this figure now, 
replaces the purchases in the income statement. And if you come here now to the income statement, you would realize that um, you would realize that now instead of having the purchases, sales it is here. That's cost of sale, which is opening stock plus cost of goods of finished and that were transferred. This now figure it is the figure that we got here and it replaces the purchases. Instead of purchasing the finished goods, we manufactured it. And then you, the cost of goods available for sale, then you rest the closing inventory. But remember here, in the income statement, we use the figure for the finished goods. The figure for the finished goods, you get this. Even the opening stock here, it is for the finished goods because those are, remember this is the profit and loss account under sales. What we normally sell is the finished goods. So that figure comes here and then the cost of sales is subtracted from the sales so that now we can get the gross profit. Then you rest the expenses. Three over four was for the factory. The rent one over four is for the office. So for the office, it is captured here as an income, uh, as, a, as an expense in the income and expenditure. Then you have uh, the income statement, sorry, depreciation on office equipment, office salaries, office, electricity and then you arrive at the net profit so the expenses that comes here are for the office in the income statement but in the manufacturing the indirect expenses here are the expenses that are meant for the for the factory like that and that is how you do it and then the other part for the uh, statement for the financial position actually remains the same thank you for your time